Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to do a how to play video on Glass Cabinet Hobbies Zombag. First thing you're going to need to know how to play Zombag is the setup and the first thing is to find the first player. Whoever had the least amount of sleep last night goes first since they are the most likely to be a zombie. Step two, deal each player three to five cards depending on the length of the game. Three cards for a shorter game and five cards for a longer game. Step three, start with the first player and proceed clockwise. Each player pulls five starting tokens from the bag. These starting tokens can only consist of two survivors, two weapons, and one item. You draw these randomly from the bag until you get this mixture. So you'll have any kind of characters, any two weapons, and one supply item. You ignore all the zombie and event tokens from the bag to get your starting tokens. Once each player has their starting tokens, they'll field their survivors and equip their weapons to them. We have our two survivors and we have our weapons and we need to equip our weapons to our survivors so all you do is just put the weapon on top of the survivor they can hold one item at a time and your supplies or any kind of items that you have go in your backpack and your backpack consists of six and that would be below your starting uh, survivors and you can put your cards over to the side or in your hand, whatever you choose. So now that we're ready to start the game, I need to cover the turn order. Each turn, players get two main options. They can either go into the bag and scavenge for items, gather new survivors, and kill zombies, or you can choose to get new missions. If you choose to do the scavenging part, you have some options. The first part, you can complete a mission that would consist of taking one of your mission cards and basically what you would do is if you had the construction worker and his sledgehammer, you would take them and discard them to the bag. Doing so you would complete this mission and score the points and you could put them to the side here as scored points however you do not have a construction worker you do have a sledgehammer so you will throughout the game you're going to be trying to get a construction worker so that would be the example of completing a mission you can do that at the beginning of your turn before you do anything else so if you have a mission to complete, that's the first thing you can do on your turn. If you obtain any items that would complete a mission, you have to wait to the beginning of your next turn. The second part of your turn, if you've completed a mission or if you don't have a mission to complete, you can trade items. Say you want to trade uh, this handgun with another player. You can offer this up for one of their items. You can barter with them. Anything goes, really. You just basically have to uh, get something in return for your gun. You can't trade for free. Once you've done all your trades, then you move on to the next step. Then choose to go into the bag and scavenge the world. At that point, you would roll a D6. Whatever you roll, you can go up to that many times into the bag, drawing one token at a time. So if you roll a 1, you can only pull 1. However, if you roll a 6, you can pull up to 6. However, you are risking your life by pulling 6 tokens. So you may want to go in at a much lower, maybe 2 or 3, depending on how strong your team is. Right now, you start in the game with just 2 weapons. You only have a total of 3 damage you're gonna have a hard time doing a lot of damage so you might wanna go in there and try to get a few items first and once you build up an army when you draw those big numbers then you're probably gonna to wanna to go in and do five or six at a time and hope for the best once you finished everything out of the bag once you go into the world 
get your tokens and resolve all your tokens, that's the end of the turn. However, if you've chose to not go in the bag this turn and you just wanted to get new missions, like I said, you get either or. You can either go into the bag on your turn or you can get new missions. How to get new missions, you draw two cards from the stack that's in the middle of the table. You draw two cards, you look at them, compare them with yours, and then in total, discard two of the cards, and then that'll end your turn. So if you have some missions that you do not believe you will be able to complete, that'll be the time when you want to draw two new cards and then discard two new two cards. Uh, they can be the cards that you drew or um, obviously the ones that you have already. So that is your option. If you do the missions, that's all you're going to do on your turn. If you just want new missions, that's all you're going to be able to do. Next, I want to talk about token setup. This is essentially a demo of how your army should look like. You would have your completed quests on one side of your army. You would have your survivors and you would have your weapons above them. They're equipped. Your backpack is below here and your KO'd zombies would be scored flipped over on the other side. So you have a graveyard on one side, your completed quests on the other or missions, and you would have all of your characters and your weapons equipped to them. The dog is essentially a character and a weapon. He uh, he doesn't have <laughs> he he can attack himself. So he's not a, he's not a weapon and he's not actually a character. So he's a very unique uh, token and it's very useful. Moving forward, I also want to cover the layout. You'll have your deck of cards and your your bag with all the other tokens in the middle of the table so everyone can reach them as well as your dice. So these need to be in the center of the table so all players have access to them and essentially everyone will have a similar setup. This setup is essentially mid-game setup. The next step I want to cover is scavenge resolution. This is the steps at which you resolve the tokens that you pull. So once you go into the bag, or you choose to go in the bag, you would roll the die. You roll a four so you can go up to four. Let's just choose to draw four in here randomly. One, two, three, four. Actually, I did a really good job. Okay. We have a zombie, a survivor, a weapon, and a supply. These are all considered items. This is considered a zombie. And let me show you what a event looks like. So this is how it would be resolved. You would do your event first after that gets resolved then you would deal with all of the zombies if you kill all of the zombies that you pull then you move on to resolving the items and you get all of these items to your base remembering your backpack can only fit up to six items however you can equip items and survivors immediately so if you get a survivor, you can put him on your army and equip him with a weapon immediately. And then supplies like this would go in your backpack. If you have more than six spots, you're good. You just put in your backpack. If not, you have to make a hard decision on your backpack and discard one of them. Then that goes back into the bag. Events will always resolve. Zombies, however... If you do not kill the zombie, all of these items that you're hoping to get, get tossed back into the bag. So you have to kill all the zombies to get all your loot. They're the gatekeeper. So you want to build up your power so you can kill all the zombies. This might be an easy battle. However, if you pull three zombies and one guy, 
you're gonna have a hard time killing these zombies to get your your guy however in this scenario you have three zombies say you're not gonna be able to kill all of the zombies you can choose which zombie you want to attack if you do kill it you do score the points and then that's scored on your army however the other two zombies still would be survivors and then they all get put back in the bag back in the wild again and so they can be drawn again ending and winning the game the game ends as soon as one player finishes their last mission each player totals all their total points earned sometimes lost and whoever has the highest points wins so on this particular turn you have two missions complete you look at your final mission card and you notice hey I have that so you're gonna turn this in these two would get discarded to the bag and this would get scored over here you have no more missions so the game ends everyone would total up their points and whoever has the highest points wins the game when scoring points you will score your missions we see you have three here. However, if you were not the person that ended the game, you will more than likely only have two or one missions completed. Then you would count up your total zombies. So we have three zombies here and any of the supplies you have that are worth points. Characters are not worth any points. They are only used to help build up armies and gain supplies. Weapons are also not worth points. They're, they're just equipment that you use to obtain things. So you can gain these essential items like bullets, food and water, and binoculars for safety. These things are in your backpack and they are worth points. Killing zombies are also worth points and completed missions. The total is your combined total score. Whoever has the highest at the end of the game is declared the winner. Next step we're gonna cover combat. If you're gonna fight you want to make sure that your survivors are armed. We have the general, the teacher, and the baseball player here. They all have equipment. The baseball player has a matching weapon here that does two damage and because it's matching he gets a reroll one of his dice when he makes this attack roll. It's a two power so when he attacks he gets to roll two dice. The teacher has a cleaver which does one damage, so would get to roll one die. The general here has a sniper rifle that has the power of three, so when he rolls, gets to roll three dice. This one's matching, so when the baseball player attacks, because he has the matching bat, he will get to potentially re-roll one of his dice if he doesn't like the result of one of the dice. However, because these characters here do not have matching weapons to their characters, they would not get to reroll any of their dice and be left stuck with their results. Each zombie has a hit target you're trying to roll. For this case, this zombie has a hit target of three. So when you try to attack this zombie, you're trying to roll at least a three or better. And the health is two, so you have to hit that two times. Once you roll a three two times, this zombie is KO'd and it's flipped over and you get the score of those points which is five and this goes into your base. This zombie right here you have to roll a four three times. Let's do an example of rolling. This general here has a sniper rifle with a power of three so he gets to roll three dice. Let's get the dice here. We rolled a two, a six, and a three the target is a four, so only one of the dice actually hit. So this dice would get counted as one hit, leaving him to two health. Now you attack with your next character. Each character can only attack one time per turn. And this guy right here would move over here. She has a one, so she gets to roll a one. That's a three, that also misses. So this zombie is really difficult to KO. Now we have the baseball player. He has a power of two, so he gets to roll two dice. However, he's matching, so he can re-roll one of these dice. He rolled a six and a one. We're gonna keep the six 
and we're gonna get to re-roll this one. We've already hit him two times, so one more hit, and we'll KO this zombie. That was a three. That would miss. So this zombie survived and would go back in the bag. However, if I would have rolled a five or a four or a six, we would have KO'd this zombie and then we would have scored the points. And if you would have had any kind of items that were pulled in addition to pulling the zombie, you would now get these items. However, if you do not kill the zombie, these items go back in the bag and any zombies that you did not kill go back in the bag. Any zombies you do kill go in your graveyard. Each survivor gets to make one attack and extra hits don't carry over to extra zombies. So if you were to roll a three dice here and they all would hit the zombie and say the zombie only needed two damage to KO him, that extra one would not transfer over any other zombies. It would just be... Uh, just a waste, it just overkill, more or less. Let's take a look at the event conflict token. When this token is pulled, each player rolls a single die. So every player gets to roll a single die. The highest roll wins, and that player gets to scavenge the bag for one token for free. If they are the active player, they can take one of the tokens they pulled instead. A player can choose to take a zombie from their active pile. If they do, they fight that first, then they fight any remaining after it. So that's a pretty good strategy if you have multiple zombies, but you're not going to really be able to kill them on your turn because you get to only attack traditionally with one of your characters on a turn. However, if you conflict it and you pull it, then you would basically get to attack this zombie with all of your characters and then resolve that and then anything left over would also then you get to finish that on your turn. So using the conflict token to take zombies is pretty good. However, if you roll this and you're not the active player, you go in the bag for one free token and resolve it. If it's another conflict token, you resolve the conflict token. If it's a zombie, you fight the zombie. If it's any other item like a weapon, character, or supply, you just obtain that and put it in your backpack. The next event token that I want to cover is raids. When this token is pulled, each player rolls a single die. Whoever rolls the highest gains this token for later. It doesn't count as an item, so it doesn't take up a spot in your camp. And on another player's turn, discard this token to steal from their pulled tokens. You must then roll a d6 on a 4 through 6. You are allowed to steal one of those items that they pulled on their turn. However, if you roll a 6 on that raid, you can steal someone's items from their backpack at their camp. Or you can take something that they pulled out of the bag when they scavenged. However, if you roll a one through three, your raid is unsuccessful and you get nothing. And our last event token that I wanna cover is the infection token. When this token is pulled, roll a D6. And on a one through three, you keep this token. However, if you roll a four through six, pass this token to the next player. It's like hot potato. It's a negative five points. So you actually do not want to keep this infected person. If you are successfully to pass it on, then the next player gets to roll, and hopefully they roll a one, two, or three to, so they can keep it and it doesn't get passed around. This continues until a player gains it. So this could potentially go around the table, uh, you know, a couple times until someone um, successfully uh, rolls to keep it, which is not a good thing for them. This token cannot be traded or discarded and gives the player that has it a negative five to their point total at the end of the game. However, there is a mission in the game that you can get that will cure this token. Um, however, it's not easy to obtain, so if you see this infected person, you wanna roll high. 